right now I'm I'm just sort of I'm itching to get on with it, and and incredibly nervous because I don't know what they're going to ask me, and and I I just can't wait to get in there and answer the first question. I think probably we should start the night before. I was completely wired from you know bedtime the night before, didn't sleep, you know, lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, you know, rattling my fingers, just so excited. And Thinking what? Thinking about what? Dread. Absolute dread. I had it in my mind that this Russian professor was going to come and ask me implausibly difficult maths questions. I've spoken to a few people about their vivas and everybody's had a different experience. So Mm. Who knows? For the uninitiated, the Viva is the exam at the end, right? Now, I wanted to film this interview sitting at this desk because seven and a half years ago, I came to university to do a degree in physics. I left my job, had a good job, gave up on all of that, and I sat right here and a big grin on my face. And then I did a PhD, and at the end of the PhD, here we are seven and a half years later, there's one exam, right? Huge amounts of pressure. And people talk about the pressure on A-level students if you move the exam to the end of the two-year period. And you say, oh, well, you're putting a lot of eggs in one basket there. Everything is on this one exam. And so, I mean, to, to not be nervous is just implausible. There certainly is a few things that Roger and Mike think I should talk about. And so uh, we've just been almost like rehearsing, but, but in a very informal way. I've just been chatting and saying, well, I could say this. And they'll be, no, no, don't say that. And it's, it's an oral exam. So essentially there's one guy from the university, the internal examiner, and an external guy who's invited in and they read your, your thesis, the 200 page document that you've written up to describe the minutiae of everything you've done for the last, as it turns out, four years. I've been nervous before. Um, I, as a younger man, I, I did some stand-up comedy in Glasgow uh, as a, a younger and an English man. Um, that, was, that was a very nerve-wracking experience. And I know before I went on stage, I would run backwards and forwards to the toilet, just like, I must need another pee already. Um, it was, I got the worst stage fright. Actually, it's why I stopped doing it, because uh, I, just, I just couldn't handle the stage fright. It was outrageous. And I feel a bit like that now. Um, so I've been three times, and <laughs> it's nothing left. So, so I'm just sort of jiggling about and thinking, oh God, let's get on with it. Yes, you can fail, but people don't talk about the occasions on which people do fail, because it's embarrassing. So it's just like um, queuing for a roller coaster. You know, I've got metaphors coming out my ears. But... Got up, got suited and booted, best clothes. Now, normally I'm... I'm not a, a smartly dressed individual. For those who don't know, James always wears shorts. Not always, just, Pretty much always. just most of the time. I, I think it would have been disrespectful to my examiner to turn up dressed like this. So I wanted to, I wanted to look smart. I wanted to show him that I was taking the day seriously. And so best suit, it felt good. You know, I, I came in dressed in, in my best and it's not very often I do that every couple of years now. So I enjoyed that. Went up there, we all sat down in, in this, uh, in Professor Beaton's office. It's a lot like an interview. I mean, if you've ever had a job interview for a job you really deeply want, you know, then that's, that's what it was. And I sat down with these two guys, one of whom I've never met before, and they asked me an opening question, which is, it's a gentle starter, right? It's there to, to, to get you warmed up, to get you talking about anything at all, just to, you know, just to break the silence, I suppose. And I fumbled it. In truth, I really fumbled it. I knew, I knew what they were going to ask because there's only a certain number of ways you can start a conversation about uh, a thesis. And, and sure enough, they asked me what the main points of, of my thesis were. And I had it prepared. I had a list of seven things that I wanted to say. And it's like I dropped the ball. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> um, so it, that probably took about 10 minutes for me to answer that question, I guess. I'm quite loquacious at the best of times, but you know, I really wanted to make a good impression and I went on a bit, let's, let's be honest.
I want to tell you what happened next, but I cannot for the life of me remember. I know that we went through my thesis one chapter at a time and that Professor Brilliantov in particular had post-it notes through my thesis, a lot of post-it notes through my thesis with questions on each one. And so we're turning from page to page and he's just asking me the question on the post-it note. And I was expecting that. I was expecting something like that. But to see this, this body of work with just question after question after question in it was, was just eye-watering. And I think, oh no. And that's it. That's, that's all I remember because it was so intense. I mean, people were extremely concerned that putting a camera in the Bible was going to in some way affect the outcome, whether it affected my performance, added to my nerves. But the reality of it is I didn't think about it once. I walked in, oh, there's the camera. Didn't think about it again. I was so, I mean, it would have been ridiculous to think about the camera. I was there to do a Viva for something I've been working towards for seven years. I'm not going to suddenly stop and go, ha, ah, camera, hi. You know, it, would be like, it would be like the winner of the Grand National stopping and posing for the photo finish. Just wasn't going to happen. I wasn't torn apart, no. I, I went in there, I knew my stuff. I had prepared really hard for this. Um, I'd read my thesis through. I had anticipated what I might be asked. Um, I picked out a few weak spots in my thesis and had prepared defenses for those. And, uh, and, and I did the work, right? I mean, if I came and asked you about being a cameraman, you'd be able to talk to me about that for hours on end, right? Pretty much nonstop. And that's basically the truth of it. Somebody comes and asks me about being a physicist, I just talk about my work for hours on end. And so because it's my work, because I did the work, it was a very comfortable, actually, in the end, really very enjoyable experience. It was something that in, in hindsight, I'd do it again. <laughs> I, don't think I, I don't think I'll get the opportunity, but I would do it again for sure. It'd be great. Essentially, I didn't move. I mean, it, three hours went by in such a blink of an eye, it's ridiculous. I, I thought it was about an hour. We'd, we'd, we'd gone into the details so many times as we, as we went through the thesis that, that there was nothing left to discuss at the end. And so that was just the stop. And they said, well, you, you can go. And I was shocked because I really thought, First of all, I thought I'd been in there just a few minutes. And second of all, I was braced at that point for, for the hard stuff that was going to come next. I left the room and went for a, a glass of water. And I literally had time to pour myself a drink. And Professor Beaton appeared at the door and said, you can come back. And he had his best uh, poker face on. So congratulations. We're recommend that you award a PhD. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Well done. So, thank you very much. Yeah, and I, I went weak at the knees. I thought I was going to fall down. I was <laughs> so relieved. And that's, that's the sad truth of it, actually, is that I felt relief. It was, it was some time before I felt joy. What I felt was just, oh, thank, thank heavens for that. You know, <laughs> it's done. Uh, I walked out the door and Roger was standing there and he just had the biggest grin on his face. Um, so he'd obviously been listening at the door, I don't know. Has he passed? I wasn't really prepared for how I was. I felt so dazed afterwards and confused and just like, oh, I'd fast, happy. Three, three and a quarter hours. Oh, I had loads of stamina yeah, left to do more. <laughs> <laughs> it took me about 45 minutes before I called Joe and told her. Um, what did you say? Oh, I didn't have to say very much. I just said I passed. What else was I going to say? I passed. Um, she was ecstatic. And I think probably because she was so joyous about the whole thing, that helped me to move past the relief and actually start to really enjoy the moment. Um, I made just so many phone calls in the evening. And I phoned my dad first. and. He said, you know, just really proud of your son. And that was nice, you know, that was nice. And my sister, you know, I've just been jumping up and down ever since. She's so excited about it. It's like she got it, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, my family are really pleased because I think that they have been going through this experience with me. And it has been a really intense 
period in our lives. And so just to, to share in the excitement of some really positive news has been, it's been great. So, well, I, I think I get to be doctor in about July, but I filled in some form. And I can't even remember what it was. It was some inconsequential form. I think it was a sort of, we'll call you back form for the council. Um, because my bin didn't get collected the other day or something stupid like that. And it said, you know, title, and I put doctor, and oh, that felt good. 